Hi guys, I'm Tracy. Thank you for joining me today. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over the rest of my brushes in my collection, which are pretty much my cheek, you know, blush highlighting, foundation, concealer brushes. And my last video, I went through all my eye brushes. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a long video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get started, I did want to acknowledge the tragic passing of Mel Thompson. Now, I, I didn't know her personally, but she is one of those creators that greatly influenced my makeup journey and my channel. I've learned a lot about brushes and makeup, um, makeup techniques from her. She has inspired me and influenced um, my choices, uh, both, you know, with my own personal, um, you know, brush collection, my makeup, and as well as helping me create my own channel. You know, she inspired me and I did take little tips from her videos, little technical things like how she inserted the B-roll into her tutorials and went back and forth from, you know, different um, scenes. Anyhow, like things like that. I, I really liked the, um, the, the editing and the presentation and the emotion and the, um, uh, what's that word? Enthusiasm she had for her channel, and I really was—I'm just completely shocked. I don't really understand. From what I can tell, I think her family wants to keep um, the reasons um, to themselves, which I think is totally understandable. And it just um, is such a tragic loss for someone who had, you know, so much going for her at least to me and um, so much more to look forward to but um, I you know and I'm when I think about putting together my own content a lot of her comes back to me you know videos she's done products she's influenced me to get um, ways that she did her makeup and it makes me really sad it, it really does for someone who I never um, personally knew, you know, we, we didn't um, meet or, you know, have any kind of um, communication aside from her channel, but um, I really wanted to mention something because I think it's a very huge loss to the um, YouTube uh, beauty community. So I really want to say that I'll probably, you know, in the, in the near future, put something together, like maybe... Um, you know, something that she inspired me on or, you know, something along those lines I haven't decided yet. But um, I, w I really want to say that and um, tell you guys uh, how much she um, influenced me. And uh, I, I really, I don't want to sound dramatic. That's not my style. But I don't know if this channel would be what it is. Not that it's, you know, this you know, huge, huge channel, um, I do think a lot of things would be different if it weren't for her channel. So um, just, I, I just wanted to put that out there and I'll let you guys know how she um, influenced me in so many ways and very positive ways. Um, nothing ever bad. I never got any, um, I don't know, like negative, uh, feelings about anything she did. She she has such a positive um, persona, at least, you know, in front of the camera. And um, that's what makes this so, so tragic and surprising. But anyhow, um, more on that, um, I'll probably bring it up um, in a more positive light in a, a future video at some point. But anyhow, today I'm going to be going over all of my face brushes so, um, you know, sit tight and I hope you enjoy the video. If there's any um, brushes you have more questions on or want me to go into more detail, just leave them in the comments below. I'm going to just be really quickly um, running through these brushes. So I don't want it to be too long. All right. So enjoy the video. All right. Hi, guys. So let's get started. I took a long time trying to figure out how I was going to present these brushes and what order and things like that. So I decided to start 
with kind of um, dividing them up by shape. So, I mean, the first group's gonna be my large um, powdering and finishing brushes. And then I'm gonna go over my foundation concealer brushes or cream brushes. And then the um, cheek brushes is what I have the most of. I'm gonna divide those into three shapes, uh, tapered, rounded, and angled. So we're, we're gonna do those at the end. Okay, so let's get started on my large, um, I guess, uh, powder brushes. And um, I thought maybe it'd be nice to start off with this Hakuhodo, the K022, my very first Hakuhodo brush. And it's probably my sparsest brush as far as the bigger brushes. And I don't use this just because it provides really a light, very, very light um, dusting. But if that's what you're going for, if you have very fair skin or you have products that are a little um, coming on too strong for you, this could be a good one in solving that. But I like my brush to be, you know, pack a punch a little bit more. But I, I occasionally will reach for this, but it's very rare. Okay, and then we'll go to the Refer 22. This is my probably my largest brush as far as the amount of hairs. And um, I've used this mainly for bronzer. It's just kind of not my type of brush that I prefer. I prefer a smaller brush for bronzer, but I occasionally find myself um, using this to, if I wanted to cover a large um, portion of my face in a short period of time, it is a very nice brush and uh, this was gifted to me. And then next, the Koyuto BP13. Um, I do think this is a great value. I really don't use it. It's a foundation brush, but it's not really dense enough to apply foundation, if you guys can see that. It's, um, it's not sparse like the K022. It's not super dense either. It's kind of like a medium density, but it is nice for uh, applying bronzer in a big, in a large area. Okay, now this is the Chikohoto GSN2, and I've pretty much used this for foundation, and I, I do really like it for liquid and cream foundation, and I have used it for powder, and it does a fine job. It's, it is called a powder brush, and what I like most about it is um, I like that it has these dark hairs, so if you wanted to use it with finishing powder, for me it would be very easy to see. It's a very dense brush. And this is dyed, um, dyed psychohogo hair, I think. Um, but I, I really, this was my go-to foundation brush for a long time. But now that I have more, I don't use this for foundation. Um, one of the big reasons is very hard to wash. It's so dense, the hairs are so short. In fact, I think you can kind of see right here how there's still some foundation stuck in there. It's just, it's just a hard brush to clean and it's such a beautiful brush. I don't want um, to lose, you know, too many of the hairs and, and damage anything. So that's the GSN2. And I'll go to the Refer 24. I, I do, this is one of my favorite Refer brushes. I like it for bronzing. I, um, I usually like pat or kind of swipe like around my uh, hairline. And I think this is a very solid, um, kind of multi-functional um, brush. You can use it for blush and um, well, blush and bronzer. And I guess if you wanted to um, kind of heavily powder parts of your face, it'll work. It's just that it's so um, domed, it's not gonna be very specific. But I do like this for, I use it with my Shantikai, um the real bronze uh, bronzer. Cause it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty dense. It picks up a hard press product very well. And this is the Koyuto CD Japan Fupa 14. I, I think this would be my favorite finishing powder brush because it's um, gray squirrel. Uh, I don't know if it's a mix. I'm pretty sure it's a mix. Hopefully you guys can see this. And it's a great value. I believe this is in the $65, $68 range. For a thick, um, high quality, soft brush like this, that is an amazing deal. And I do find myself reaching for this, um, this one and the next brush I'm gonna talk about as my top uh, finishing powder brushes because it's so soft and it provides a really smooth, um, poreless finish when you're doing um, finishing powder. 
And then my last finishing powder brush is the Sonia G Smooth Buffer. I, I really do like this for my hourglass finishing powders. Um, I, I like the shape because it can get in like between your eyes. It can get really close to the under eye area. And sorry, this, this way of filming is very new to me, so I know it's going to go out. But um, it's just... I, I don't really use this type of flat brush very often. I think it's one of my only ones, but it's um, it's just very good at getting into like the little crevices of your face and it's amazing with the hourglass finishing powders. I have tons of videos on this. Okay, so now we're gonna go to I'll take this off. Okay, so now here are all my um, cream uh, foundation, um, cream, you know, bronzer and blush brushes. And then I'm going to get to the um, concealer brushes right after this. Um, so let's start out with one of my favorites. This is the Mizuho CMP 527. Wait, no, that's not it. I'll, I'll put it in the in this description. It's their... Um, foundation I think they call it a liquid brush but anyhow um, it's a synthetic brush it kind of reminds me of those um, synthetic hourglass brushes and it's really great for foundation uh, liquid foundation I do find myself using this a lot and then here's the uh, Sanya G uh, jumbo base which is amazing this one is kind of hard to wash it's very dense um, I find myself kind of steering away from this one just because of um, the density and how long it takes to dry and uh, how long it takes to wash. I just wash this one and it's really soft. I really do enjoy this one. I do think though, if you're trying to um, you know save some money on a foundation brush, this one is um, this one is like a splurge. You can get a very similar result with this one right here, which is probably like half the price. But it is a nice brush. I'm not saying like, you know, don't get it. It's just for the price, I do think you can get something for less, you know. Anyhow, okay, now this is the classic base. I love this brush. I use it all the time for um, cream bronzer and, and contour and blush. And I've used it for foundation. It does great with all three. And I, I really, really like this brush. I think probably my favorite, this one and the mini base are my favorite in the, um, the Fusion series. So I like the size difference too. It's not like super, this one's not like super big. This one's not like really tiny. They're just, oh, they're, they're really um, good size to have. And this one, I really like it for like specific, specific um, blush placement like my cream blushes and I like that you could um, dip this into um, the pans I have and it's just a really nice shape that's why I picked this one for blush over this one I feel like this picks up a little too much you know especially like my tower tower 28 blushes I like having I like picking up just a little oh my god little at a time so I really like this for a cream blush and then here we'll go to the Mizuho. Um, I, I think this is called a found a liquid brush. It's like meant for liquid foundation. But what I use it for is um, like cream bronzer and contour because of the angle. It's a slight angle, but it, it gets into like the hollows of your cheeks really well and on the jawline. So, oh God, okay. It's pretty firm. It's not like the softest brush. But, um, you know, it's very, you can use it for foundation, cream blush, you know, and it's just got that very slight angle. Oh, there we go. So it's so just very slightly angled and um, pretty easy to wash. It feels pretty durable. These Mizuho brushes feel like they're going to last forever. You know, it's just like, these are just like solid brushes. 
Okay, and then we're, we're gonna go to the Coyuto, and this one's dirty. Um, I use this for foundation. I, I When I first got these, I didn't think they were large enough, but um, they are. I do like this for um, cream uh, contour as well, cream bronzer, because of the size. It fits into the hollows of, of the cheeks and on the jawline really well. God, it's not, it's not focusing again. Okay, there. And it's not angled, so it's like the other one, but it's not angled. And um, it's about equally as soft. I think this is um, Saikoho Goat Hair. And the Mizuho, Mizuho, I believe, is Sokoho Goat Hair as well as synthetic. But um, I do I do like it. I don't, I don't think this is necessary. The BP14 um, from Koyudo. All right, and then we're going to, uh, I just went over this um, in my best brushes under $30. This is the Chikuhoto G10. And um, it's, I, I've been using this for foundation and it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's kind of a basic brush, but um, when I first got it, I was not impressed. I was like, oh God, what did I, what did I get this for? But um, I kind of warmed up to it and it, it does a great job and it's a great value. I believe it comes out to $29 US, which for a Chikoloto brush is a great deal. Uh, not the softest brush, but um, you know, it gets the job done and it's very compact. And if I do travel, I would probably bring this with me. Okay, now we're going to go with the Fupa um, 5, and I really don't use this. I'm not a fan of these synthetic um, bristles. They're just too hard on the face. It does provide a nice um, finish with foundation, but they're, they're just it's so hard. It doesn't give at all, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I don't think I really needed this, but I, I'm glad I know what, what they're like. They come in all sorts of shapes. It's very slightly angled. I don't know if you can see that. She's got a slight angle. Wait, yeah, it, it's an angled brush. Slightly angled. Okay, and then uh, another one kind of with a similar shape. This is the Hokoto BZ2, and I really like this for um, cream contour, cream bronzer, as well as cream blush. And it does foundation great, and I love the shape. I love the slight um, um, this angle kind of gets into like, you know, the sides of the nose and everything. Uh, and it comes in a, a bigger domed uh, shape, the BZ1. This is the BZ2. I hope I said that. <laughs> so um, I, I really like this. This is a great value too. I think this is in the 30, mid $30 range. Okay. And then this one, I've not really gotten the hang of it. Oh shoot. I didn't put the name on it. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm not even going to write it because I don't recommend this brush. It's synthetic, the, the hairs are like, they're just too stiff and it's impossible to clean. I tried cleaning this, I hadn't used it much, I cannot get the foundation out and it took forever to dry. So if you really want to know, let me know, I'll look it up, but I, I don't recommend this one. One I do highly recommend is the Coyuto. Fupa 02. I use this for foundation. It's um, very efficient, provides like a medium uh, coverage, and it's not super soft. It's not pokey either. It's just really good. It kind of just, if you want to do your foundation really fast, this, this will do it. It just kind of gets everything on all over in a very short period of time. So I, I do hi highly recommend this one. Okay, so here are my tapered blush or cheek highlighter brushes. Most of these I think are marketed as highlighting brushes, but I tend to use these for under eye powdering and um, you know, like targeted powdering and some of them for highlighter and bronzer. Um, let's start off with the OG Wayne Goss number two. You can't get this one, so I'm not going to say much. It's super soft, amazing, 
brush for the under eyes. One you can get that he brought back is the airbrush and um, it's a great brush. I got this one. This was $35, which was a steal. It's super high quality. I think this was my first um, food a brush. My, my, this one and the number 19. So uh, this one is one of those like, I guess, gateway brushes and uh, super soft. This is, I've had this forever. It's not my preference, but I do use it. I prefer this, this, this one over this one, but this one you can get and it's gotten up in price a little. Okay. Now we'll go with the, um, Bisciotto cherry highlighting brush, this HLCH. I really think this is a very useful brush. I use it for under eye powdering. And um, it's, it's just a great brush. It's dyed um, Socoho goat hair, and I, I love the way you know it. It's uh, it really picks up product, maybe a little bit more than um, the other two I mentioned, but um, it's very it's pointed in a very you know nice way, very useful. And then uh, the Sony G Designer Pro. Um, super useful, uh, versatile brush. I do use it mainly for under eye powdering. I'll say that would be my number one recommendation for this brush, but it's also really nice for highlighter because it, it doesn't uh, really like pack on the highlighter. It just kind of lightly dusts it so it won't get as shiny as some of them can. If you, if you like a really shiny highlighter, a really strong highlighter, you can get there with this, but if you, do, if you want it very subtle, this is a great brush for highlighter. Okay, now this is the uh, Yachio from Hakuhodo. It's their medium tapered. If I do use it, it's for under eye powdering, but not my preference, and I actually rare, rarely use this one. Okay, now this is the Ehodo um, highlighting brush. It's um, a mix of, I think, Sokoho goat hair and gray squirrel. I use this uh, similarly that I, that I use this one. It's pretty much for under eye powdering. And I like that it's such a, um, it is such a long brush and it's got like a, you know, nice taper. Okay, then this is the Ruffer 19. If When I did use this, I used it for under eye powdering, I think. Um, it might be kind of made for highlighting as well. I have not tried it for that, but you know, it's a solid brush. It's very tapered. So I don't know if I could show you guys. It's really, really comes to a point. Really, really comes to a point. See? So that's what makes this one unique. And then um, the Hakuhodo um, G5538. Uh, this is kind of like uh, similar to the Sony G Soft Cheek. It's, it's, it's very sparsely packed, so it's, it'll pro provide a very light dusting of blush, which is mainly what I use it for. But I've also used it for um, powdering under the eyes, and it works fine. Very, very light coverage that it will provide. Maybe not. Sorry about that. Okay, now um, last but not least is the Bisciotto highlighting brush from their long series. I call it their premium series. Um, such a beautiful brush and it's so heavy. It's weighted. The, the wood is really well varnished and I would say like one of my most beautiful brushes. And uh, this is dyed Psycho goat hair. It feels very soft for goat hair and um, it doesn't bleed. I use this. I've been using it for bronzer like around the like perimeter of my face um, but I also use it for under eye powdering I haven't had this too long so I don't have a ton of feedback but it's just such a such a beautiful brush all right so these are gonna be the I guess the rounded cheek brushes or blush brushes and I actually have two plates of these so it's going to take a little bit. Um, oh, actually, these are the same. I can put these off. These are, um, I've talked about it so many times, the Sony G Soft Cheek provides such a light, beautiful, beautiful dispersed application of blush. If you can get it, I highly recommend the Soft Cheek. Another amazing Sony G brush, the Face 2. This is a pretty sparsely um, uh, packed brush, so it has a lot of 
give and I just I don't know I don't use it I kind of use it to um, brush off fallout because it doesn't really like disturb what's under you know what's underneath so pretty much what I used it for if I had some like streaks from my foundation I would use this to um, kind of smooth that out but uh, it's a beautiful brush it's one of her um, fundamentals brush brushes but um I just don't really use it not to say there's anything you know wrong with it it's just I think I just have too many of these types of brushes and it just becomes hard to decide what to use and then the Sonya G Cheek Pro another amazing um, brush I tend to use this for my lighter um, pigmented blushes but um, I know Chris, one of my subscribers, said that she likes it for even like pigmented products because it's so good at blending things out. You know, if you made a mistake, oops, I put too much, this really does um, kind of fix that. So I really do. If you can get this, it's, it's the beautiful brush as well. Oh my god, I'm getting tired. <laughs> this is the Wayne Goss 12. Um, I guess I should have included it in the in the other cream blushes but brushes but i use this for um cream contour and cream blush pretty much i haven't used this for a while but it's one of my um earlier brushes but really nice because of the shape yeah it's flat okay now this is the refer five um i haven't had this one too long either i did use it today for blush and yeah, it's kind of like a standard blush. I, I use it like in tapping like this. And uh, it's, you know, it provides a pretty strong coverage. Um, we have a solid brush, very sturdy. Uh, something that it kind of reminds me of, it's just like a longer version of the Sonya G Classic Cheek. And I've been kind of using this a little bit more. It's, it was in storage for a long time. And um, it, it the reason I kind of steer away from it, it tends to apply blush kind of heavily and I tend to not use those types of bl brushes very often um, but it's a beautiful brush uh, not you know not the softest of hers I'm kind of surprised because her other um, cycle brushes are really soft but um, you know a very like basic um, you know blush brush I use it like this I tap Okay, now this is the Chikoto Z4. Uh, this was in my last haul, so I have not used it very much. I've used it, I think, for powdering um, once or twice. And But, you know, I don't think I'm going to get any more Z series because this is uneven, and I've washed it, so I know it is. It's, it's yeah, it's une uneven. It's probably bundled a little off, which it doesn't make a big difference when you're using it, but when you're looking at it, it just kind of bothers me you know, knowing how much this, these brushes cost, but you know, it, it's, it's a nice brush. The hairs are very, very soft and, um, you know, no complaints aside from, you know, it's a little, it's just a little uneven. Okay. Now this is the Chikoto Z8. I use this one all the time for blush. Provides a very light coverage. Um, so, and it does bronzer very well too. So very fluffy, very soft. All right, this is the, what's that called? Almost to the finish line. I'm actually getting tired of talking, but uh, one more plate after this, my um, angled uh, face brushes. All right, so let's just get this one out of the way. Um, I, I don't recommend this one. It's like a synthetic and um, I think Soko goat hair. Yeah, just just this one. Don't get it. It's difference. Okay, now now one that totally is is the Hakuhodo B110. I love this brush for bronzer. It's just my like ideal brush. The size, the softness, the density. It's just it's that Goldilocks brush. You know, it's just um, just just right. I don't know how else to explain it. It provides such a natural, um, fairly light, light to medium application of uh, blush and bronzer. Um, pretty light, I would say, for bronzer now that I'm thinking of it. I use it for some of my lighter pigmented um, bronzers and it, it's, it's pretty light. It comes out 
light. So um, I think this would be good if you have very fair skin um, because it, you know it's pretty. It's a pretty light application. But actually, I, don't know, I think anyone can use it because it's easily buildable. You know, if you want to, you know, pack some more on. It's big, but not too big. And I cannot recommend this one enough. I actually like this one so much. It is a pricier brush. I like it so much I try not to use it and I, I try not to do that with brushes but this one really is is special. All right now we're going to go to the Sonagi Mini Cheek. Um, this is a you know just a tiny little uh, blush brush. I use it for highlighter now that I'm using highlighter now but um, it's a lot of people love it for for blush which I can see. It, it also could be used to powder the under eyes. I'm going to try to get this to... Why is it taking so long to focus? Okay, there you go. And uh, it's a blend of undyed and dyed Saikoho goat hair. Uh, you know, really solid brush. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I guess the brush we're going to talk about next would be um, maybe a better option. But, you know, it's a song of Alright, now um, this one I do think this is more a little bit more of a necessity I think everyone should have like a little um, little like highlighter blending brush that can also be an eye brush and what I like this for and um, what makes this so unique is uh, I don't because I don't have my face on camera but you can put it on the you know like the highlighter part of your cheek and kind of put it on your eye like you know kind of get the that your brow area and kind of all at the same time with one one swoop one C swoop but it's this is a very very useful brush um, and I didn't use it much for a long time but now that I'm wearing highlighter and I'm into highlighter I I do use it oh there we go it's a dyed undyed mix very useful I love this brush Okay, now we're going to go to the Yachio. This is a medium um, flat brush. I don't know. I, I, I love the way these look. They're just so cute. But um, I do feel like this sheds a lot for, you know, for a Hakuhoto brush. And I don't know. I just, at this one, I think just sheds a lot. I don't know if it's just this one, but the hairs are not as silky. If you like the way this looks... I would say get it. They're not terribly expensive. If it was a little bit firmer, maybe it'll be okay. But um, oh, very cute brush. One of my first Hakuhoto brushes. Whoa. Okay. Oh, well, another. Um, speaking of favorite Hakuhoto brushes, the J210. I believe this is one of their very popular brushes. Although I've heard from a lot of um, the Fude folks that they don't like this one. And I can see why, because it's a little dense for powder application, but I like it for um, cream blush. I, I really think it's a great size. It's slightly bigger than the Sonagi Classic Base, but it's um, because it's so dense, it, it was actually more dense. This one has kind of shed a lot on me. I don't know why. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go to the Bisciotto, um cheek brush. I think they call it a blush brush. I don't know the name of it, but um, I love these brushes. This one is probably of the three of this style that I have. This one I think is my most used. I actually, I really, I really um, kind of use it interchangeably with this brush. You see they're, they're very similar in shape and one is just darker, one's lighter. And um, I don't know, I think because of the, the darker hairs, it's easier for me to see product. Well, not necessarily, I guess, with blush, either one. But I think because I've had this, like, not as long, I've just been picking this one up over the Hakuhoto. But uh, I would say both of them perform very similarly. I'm talking about the B110. And, and this one, I think this one just looks a little bit more luxurious. And I like to make excuses for using it because of that. But... Yeah, so it's such a beautiful brush. I really am very into this um, this line from Bisciotto. 
All right, the last, last, oh, let me stretch. I'm stretching, okay. All right, our last set of brushes. I saved the angled brushes for last. I know that these are some people's favorite type of brushes. And I've only recently got into angled brushes. I, I avoided them for a long time. It's just really the last couple months that I've been using them. And um, I'm starting to appreciate them. I still feel like I have a lot of learning to do. But um, yeah, starting, I have a little collection here. Uh, I'll start off with this one, um, the Cable J6050 from Hakuhodo. It's their, you know, one of their cable brushes. They're all shaped like this. I believe when I went to the showroom, he said this was their most popular style. You can also get these in mixes and in blue squirrel. Um, I just, I don't really use this. It kind of works similarly, similarly to the, um, the J5, the G5528, which, oh, I don't know where I put it. Oh, here, here, here. It kind of works like this. It's like a, like a, you know, tapered version of it. It's just a very, very light, it provides a very light application. In fact, probably even lighter because I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Some of the hairs are like a little longer. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but some kind of come out a little bit more. But it's got a pretty severe angle. But I've only used it really for highlighter, and it does provide, you know, a very soft application of powder. But um, I know a lot of people love this line. I just, I just don't ever reach for this one. Okay, one I do reach for is the refer number four. It's, you know, got a very slight angle. It's this one, for some reason, at least with mine, it's a silkier um, goat hair than the other ones. Um, yeah, this one's very soft. It feels very similar to my Hakuhodo brushes, um, but you know, Refer has sales, and so you know, that you can often get them for like half the price. So, um, yeah, I really do like this one. I like the size, and um, I like that they're, you know, these hairs are very soft. Okay, now we're going to go to the Hakuhodo G511. It's their uh, little itty bitty angled uh, mix brush. So it has blue squirrel and uh, Saikoho goat hair. And I, I'm i just starting to use it because I'm using highlighter. But when I, or I ordered this one online, I didn't see it. I was kind of um, surprised at how small it was. It's almost like the mini cheek from Sonia G, like uh, like an angled version of that. But um, it's okay because I went to the showroom. I did a video on it and I got the size that I probably wanted and should have gotten in the first place. This is the B512. It's their medium of the angled uh, mixed hair brushes. This is also blue squirrel and goat hair. I use this one um, for bronzer. It really like, you know, uh, like around the hairline and also, also I can kind of contour with bronzer. So that's what I use it for, like warming up the face. So I, I really do love, love this one. They're both good. It's just, uh, I have a big face. So this one is just doesn't cover enough. So if anything, this one can do like highlighting. All right, now I got this Bisciotto, um another one of the long series angled uh, cheek brushes. And I don't know, it's just, these are all amazing. I use it the same way. I use this one um, for you know, warming up the face, bronzer, um, yeah, pretty much that. This, this one's a little bit new to me. But, um, you know, it's dyed cycle goat hair. It feels very soft. And, um, yeah, no complaints. It's a beautiful brush. Okay, so that's going to do it. I don't know how long this video is because my timer, for some reason, stopped working. But, anyhow, I'm, you know, very happy that I was able to get all these brushes in one video. And if there's any questions about... Um, a specific brush that I mentioned, you know, want me to go 
into a little bit more detail, just let me know and I'd be happy to do that in a future video or, or in the comments. So that's really all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.